I wanted to make a video about the Sunny 16 rule. I know a lot of people have heard about the Sunny 16 rule, but I don't think very many people know how to best utilize it. Here on the back of my camera, I just have a chart um, that I made on my computer and then printed out and put in the film holder on the back of a Nikon F2. And this is just to show how I use the Sunny 16 rule and how it's really worked for me. Um, if you don't know how your light meter works, your light meter can only it only sees your 18% gray, um, which with your zone system is zone five. Um, it can't really differen differentiate between different colors. So if your camera's pointed at black, or if it's pointed at white, your camera meter is going to get fooled. Um, generally, this Sunny 16 rule is a more, uh, more accurate way. So this is my Nikon F2. Um, this And then the meter on this one is the AS meter, um, which is the most advanced meter um, for the Nikon F2 series and actually a very advanced meter by any means. Um, can just based off the EV range, exposure value range that this camera can meter. Just on this lens, I have a Nikkor NC. That C stands for coded, so it has extra coatings. It's a 28 millimeter F2 lens, and this is a really great lens um, along with the old Nikon 35mm 1.4 lens and their 50mm lenses are pretty good as well. Um, so here on the back I have my EV range. So here I just have the numbers 15 through 10 and this is an exposure value. Um, I just am keeping this as for like 100 because that's how I learned it. Here I have 400 Y and 100 Y that stands for ISO 400 with a yellow filter and ISO 100 with a yellow filter. Um, as you can see, I have yellow filters on most of my lenses and with black and white, um, yellow filters are generally considered to be kind of your standard filter. <coughs> um, what it's, the yellow filter is really good for is darkening up skies and giving you better contrast with your clouds so your skies just don't wash out because it's going to darken all non-yellow color so blue will all get darkened. It also helps increase contrast in a scene um, which just, but it doesn't do it so much that it gives it unnatural tones. Additionally, if you're photographing people, it can help give people a little bit um, softer looking skin uh, if they have any like small blemishes or anything. So this is my EV scale from 15 to 10. This is for when I'm shooting my 400 speed film and this is when I'm shooting 100 speed film. Um, the M, that stands for 1000, that's a Roman numeral for 1000. And you can see, so the first number is my shutter speed, the second number is my aperture. And I start with um, 1000 because that's the max shutter speed for my Leica camera even though my um, f2 as you can see goes up to 2000 so I just have a 1000 so when I'm thinking I'm like okay uh, if it's just off the top of my head what is EV 15 that is going to be um, 1000 f8 and then I usually keep this 5.6 to f4 range because that's a good middle aperture, so it's easy to compensate off of that. And then um, it's also easy to um, stop up and down and just make simple one-stop calculations. So for example, if I have, if I'm shooting at EV13, I, I already know I can set my camera to 1500 f5.6. So if you look up here, I'm setting my camera to 1 1500th, and I go to my lens in the front, and I can just set to 5.6. And generally what I do is I operate in stops of one. So say I want a narrower depth of field, I'll count and I'll go one, two, and I know I'm opening up the lens two stops, so I need to have a quicker shutter speed to compensate. And I can just go to my shutter speed and go one, two. And I have the exact same exposure. One two thousandth of a second, f2.8 is the same as f5.6, one five hundredth of a second. So because if I open it up, the lens is lighting more light, I can visualize that by see 
you can see how the aperture there. I guess this isn't the best lens, but the aperture is closing down. Um, here on my Leica, it's going to be a little easier to see just with the way this lens is. So I have, if I'm closing down the aperture, to compensate for that, I need the shutter to be open up longer to have the same exposure for the film. So that's why I like this, because it's a good starting point. Um, and also a lot of my pictures are taken at f2.8 to f5.6, because I like generally having some selective focus um, to draw the viewer's eye to a certain part of my image. So if I'm shooting 400 speed film, or if I'm shooting 100 speed film, with the yellow filter, which absorbs a stop of light, um, I have my composition right here. So generally I shoot with the yellow filter um, unless I need more light. Then I take off the yellow filter and here I was shooting with low light. So I just have a clear uh, filter on the camera right there. So, um, and I know like 400 if I uh, don't, if I don't have, okay, so for example, if I'm shooting F12, with the yellow filter, it's 255.6, but if I take out the yellow filter, I just go up one and it's 500.56. So it's really easy to make calculations. Lastly, because this is the part where people get tripped up the most, is how to eyeball meter. Um, Cause a lot of people are like, oh, it's sunny 16. So I set my shutter speed to whatever my film is. So say I have 500 or if I have one, or excuse me, I have Tri-X in my camera right now. So say that's an example. So I would, I would have, the shutter set to the closest possible shutter speed, 1 500th, and the camera set to f16. And if it's a bright sunny day, that will give me a good exposure. However, that's not usually the picture I want to take. I don't really take a lot of pictures of f16 because I think generally they're uninterested, uninteresting. Um, so if I don't, and then so you're like, wait, but hey Zach, like you got 1 500th f16. That's different than the 1000 f8 you have on the back. Because you're right, if I go up to 1 1000 and then stop down one to compensate, I'm still one stop off. So remember that the yellow filter absorbs one stop of light. So you have to just compensate for that. So right now, sunny day, f15, I'll get a good exposure. Now what I like to do, even when it's a sunny day, I don't shoot really ever at F5 or at EV15 unless I'm on a beach or on snow. The reason for that being is there, I want to give one extra stop of light to my shadows and that'll just give me a little extra shadow detail. So remember how I said your light meter only can see, it can only see that middle gray, that 18% gray. Um, this chart along with the, um, zone system work hand in hand. So you have the zone system and there's a real easy breakdown is the zone system was created by Ansel Adams and it's a way, it's kind of like a scientific approach to measuring the shades of your photograph. So it's from zero, which is 100% black, no detail, to 10, which is 100% white, no detail. And then you have middle gray, which is zone five. So whenever you expose, you're just gonna, the cameras, are designed to expose for that middle gray. Um, and then, I don't know if I touched on this video, this, this is a fail-safe system as opposed to uh, the light meter because the light meter can only see middle gray. If I'm pointing at a scene, um, if, if I'm pointing at a white scene, the camera is going to get confused and it's not gonna expose properly. If I took a picture of a white wall, you're gonna get a gray picture because the camera can only like see gray and it's only trying to make the scene gray. Likewise, if I take a picture of a black wall, the camera's gonna like not know how to, because the camera can't see color, so the camera doesn't know it's a black wall um, and it's gonna expose that wall so it's gray. So you, even when using a light meter, you still have to be conscious of how the camera is seeing the image. So just to break down what these different zones mean is you have 15 middle of the day, noon, super hard light. That's me EV15. EV14 is gonna be side light. So that's that evening light or that like mid morning light. For me, because I wanna give 
my photos in the bright part of the day an extra stop so my shadows aren't completely black and I have a little bit more detail in my shadows. Even if it's the middle of the day, I generally shoot at EV14 because if you have, remember that zone system, you just have those little steps. So this is gonna expose my scene to that medium gray. And if I want to, if I add a stop of light, that just means that medium gray now becomes a zone four, which is just one shade lighter. And then it's also just moving the whole scale up. So um, everything just gets bumped up one. Um, so it's just, it, it's gonna reduce contrast slightly, but you can adjust that in your printing or in your developing stage. But it's just gonna give you a little bit more detail in, in your photo. So if you ever heard of, I'll, it's a quick tangent, if you ever heard of pulling film, that's where people intentionally overexpose their film. So they give more detail in their shadows and then they underdevelop it so they don't increase the density of the negative in their highlights too much and they don't like blow out their highlights in that way. So just quick rundown, 15 mil a day, 14, that's going to be your evening side light or your morning side light, 13, that's overcast. Another way you can look at this, 15 hard shadows, 14 is gonna have hard shadows but you're gonna have longer shadows because you have your side light. 13 is where you have soft shadows. So EV13, that's when you look at the shadows and you can see that there is a shadow, but the edge definition on the shadow is not going to be very harsh. So you just have like soft shadows from light poles and such. EV12, EV12 that is basically whenever it's overcast. If it's the middle of the day and it's overcast, it's probably gonna be EV12. Um, so that means you have zero shadows at all. So like. A lamp post isn't casting any shadows. And then EV11, that's also overcast, but that's like when it's a dark overcast. And they have EV10. EV10 is, um, that's gonna be like right around, right after the sun sets is you're gonna hit EV10. Um, and possibly if you're in super, super dark shade in the middle of the day. You can sometimes hit EV10 if you're like in an enclosed area in the shade and there's just no light going in. Um, so the easiest ones to eyeball are EV15 to EV11 because like I said, EV15, middle of day, noon, straight down sun. Um, or in my case, I shoot EV15 if I'm on snow in the middle of the day or if I'm on sand in the middle of the day because that sand and snow reflects a lot of light unlike pavement or, con or like blacktop which is gonna absorb the light. EV14 is my side light. EV13 is shadows, but soft shadows. EV12, no shadows. So you're, that's your general overcast. EV11 is no shadows, but it's just darker. So the one thing with film is you have, you have a decent amount of latitude. So with these things, if you're one stop off, one stop off up or down, your photo's still gonna be perfectly fine. Um, Film has latitude and digital now is the new sensors that are coming out with also have a lot of latitude, but one stop uh, in film is nothing to fret about. Even two stops, you're generally still gonna be just okay. Um, I just wanna make this quick video. Oh, also another thing, when people shoot, when people are shooting digitally, they always, I think, shoot at a much higher shutter speed than you need to. Like if you're, Capturing action, generally one five hundredth of a second is gonna be more than adequate. If you're just capturing people walking around, two fiftieth more than adequate. Um, and then here you have like, oh like, oh no, I'm shooting one hundred speed film, that's so slow, that's gonna be so limiting, you know, this and that. EV ten, that's when you start to get down to low light. So you're shooting at one sixtieth, you're shooting at F two point eight. So you do have um, depending on your lens, you're not going to have too much in focus. Uh, if you, I mean, so you're going to have like a selective point of focus in your frame, but one sixtieth of a second, if someone's standing still or if something's still, one sixtieth is more than enough. So just remember that even if you're shooting 100 speed film, you're not as limited as you think you are. Um, and then, I mean, obviously if you're shooting, um, 400 speed, you still have a lot more latitude. No, you don't have as much freedom as you do on a digital camera. I'm shooting 
this video on a um, a Nikon D750 and on that camera I can just get a little camera shot um, on my D750 I can bump the ISO up to 3200 and I still get great images that's one of the limitations of film is you don't have nearly the same amount of freedom as you do with digital so you just have to be I guess in my opinion you just have to be a little bit more creative uh, that was a little longer video than I was thinking it was going to be but when I looked on YouTube there wasn't too many um, good setups for actually using the zone system and implementing it on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm using this camera let's see I guess uh, bring that back in focus this camera has a meter this camera has a great light meter that being said I'm still using this chart for 80% of my exposures and it's more than adequate um, what gets to be a little bit more difficult and one reason I love the Nikon so much is if I'm taking one of my uh, Leicas on the back they don't have a little window to put your film they just have this little film reminder um, so that's definitely one thing I like about this so when I'm just shooting my Leica I just have to think like remember this chart in the back of my head and I just kind of work from there so I'm like okay you know um, if I'm shooting 400 speed film EV 14 is what, and that's why I shoot during the day is 1,056, and EV 12, which is when it's overcast, is 250, 250th of a second f4. And just using those two things, I can just add or subtract stops, and it's really easy to get a proper exposure. Um, I hope this video was helpful. This is how I've been shooting the past probably year now, and I just have found it so simple because now I can set my exposure using the distance scales I can preset my distance and I can now concentrate on finding good light and finding genuine moments so I hope this was useful